What is up, everybody? Come on in. Chill out. Let's tie some bugs. Uh, da -da -da -da. Welcome, Susan. So, I'm a little bit scrambly. I had to work late, and you know we have the moose, so we had to get him somewhat tired, and now we're scrambling to stay on time. So, bear with me as I beat up a couple hooks. Um, thank you. Yeah, the ranger is uh, coming along. It's a Ford Ranger. Uh, what's up, Justin? So uh, we'll kind of get fired up here. Basically, uh, I've been getting a ton of questions on chronomids and I can't get my taper this way and I can't tie them thin enough and um, all kinds of different questions. So I normally do my, most of my tying throughout the winter, um, but apparently lots of you are still tying right now and whether that's last minute stuff for the year or whatever it is, um, I figured to answer all the questions, hopefully in one little session here. Um, and then I'll try to repost it uh, to the, uh, whatever it is, wherever it goes. Um, so we're gonna start off pretty basic. I'm gonna try and cover basically just a simple thread body um, pattern. And then we're gonna do something like, uh, a GMC or something like that where it's just one body material and then we'll do another one uh, like a dirty olive where there's uh, thread buzzer wrap and um, some flash boot so that's kind of about as packed as as you'll get a chronomid so from super simple to uh, spreading things out on the hook shank keeping it thin that kind of thing I'm tying everything on uh, size 14, 17, 60s. Um, so these are certainly a popular size. The 14s and the 16s are probably what you're going to fish the most of. Um, so the biggest thing, I guess, with uh, cronies is just keeping uh, them simple. And I think a lot of folks just get carried away with wraps. Um, the less wraps you can put on these things, the better. That's kind of the less is more is, is basically the number one tip I have for chronomid tires. Um, so, and then a lot of people seem to like the one bead, two bead, three bead thing for when it uh, comes to building a taper. So consistency is kind of what you want with these things. And if you find some sort of way to kind of measure your thread wraps and tie all your bugs the same, you'll become really consistent. So. Uh, using your bead as a guide will help you to keep not only a, a solid taper, but also a nice even fly. And then you see, so thread is also super important. Uh, so I use a lot of UTC and Textreme threads. Um, both of them lay really, really flat and that's super important. And then keeping your thread wraps nice and snug and tight together and also under tension. Um, so when I tie in, I'm right behind the bead, you know, three, four, five wraps will kind of lock your thread in. And then I'm gonna go down one bead and back up and then down another bead and back up. And I can slow this down. And if you're not super comfortable with thread wraps, just do them slower, but you just want each one right side by side and that's going to keep your body super smooth <clears throat> um, so bead sizing for tonight is 330 seconds um, and then depending on um, how you like your bugs I mean there's no, nothing wrong with an oversized bead so I have an oversized beaded box um, where I don't tie any taper and then I just put a big bead on the end and those have their place but if we're talking just we're gonna talk basically general kind of normalities tonight. Hi, Moose. Moose, ladies and gentlemen, can you lay down? Um, so in general, your 14s um, are gonna have a 330 seconds. Your 16s are gonna be a 564ths. 
18s, <clears throat> I like to switch to uh, the 1 16ths, but you can certainly use um, a 5 64ths on those as well. But um, for the most common sizes, 14, 16, and 18, you're going to basically go, um, as I said, 3 30 seconds, 5 64th, and 1 16th. And some of you might call me crazy for using 1 16th beads, but that is the one place where fishing. Uh, I've had my ass kicked and that's when I started using them years ago was the difference between 5 64ths and 1 16th. You have a way smaller bug with the 1 16th. So, uh, okay, I'm just going to grab some wire and then wire sizing as a general rule. Um, so 12s, 14s, 10s, if you're tying them are all done with small wire. Um, the... Uh, smaller bugs, the 16, uh, 18, and 20s, you're going to want to use extra small wire. If you use a small size wire and not extra small on a really small bug, no matter what color you tie the body, when that thing hits the water, you're only going to see the rib color. Um, so the smaller rib is super, super key. Um, now, <clears throat> Uh, I think somebody asked what kind of bobbin this is. Uh, it's, this is from Stonfo, and uh, Susan at Chinook Wind sent this up to me, and I've been digging it pretty good, uh, especially for the smaller flies. So with your wire, you can tuck it in on either side. It does not, uh, like, doesn't matter if you're more comfortable tying it on the far side or right in front of you so you can see it, whatever you want to do. Um, I have used flat wire yet yeah, quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> so I've grabbed it right behind the bead. So tuck your wire close to the bead. And then if you get in the habit of spinning your thread, every time you go to grab material or whatever, um, it's going to keep it laying flat. So now I'm just going to, and again, if you're not super comfortable with wraps, just go nice and slow, but I'm going to go all the way down right to the, where the bottom is going to be and for me i typically end off about where the barb starts so having a uh, consistent place that you stop on each hook is huge too because if you stop up here on one and then down here on the other you're going to have a size 14 that could look like a 16 or could look like a 12. so you want to keep the body lengths um, consistent and then i'm just going to come back up and same thing, I'm not overlapping these wraps, I'm just touching them side by side. I'll come all the way back up, like so. <clears throat> that is blue done, yeah. Um, so now, this is a 14, so what have we done? We've done one bead, two bead, and back up. And then we've gone all the way down, and then come all the way back up. Now what I'm gonna do is I'll do one bead, two bead, three bead, and all the way back up, and that'll pretty much round off my taper. So if I come down, three bead, and if I said that the first time I said it backwards, so three bead, two bead, and then one. Okay, so if I zoom on that, you can see we have like a, the I would call that a pretty perfect taper. You don't want your tapers over exaggerated. You want them just super subtle. And that is super subtle. So you can almost, so if you, if you go through that step every time and you keep your thread wraps nice and tight and side by side, you're gonna get that taper every time. So one bead, two bead, grab your wire, all the way down, all the way up, three bead, two bead, one bead, and you're done. Um, it's a super, super easy way. I know it sounds redundant or whatever, uh, but honestly, if, if you try that, I promise you, you will go from tying whatever it is, however you're tying them, uh, to tying them just like that every time. Tight thread wraps. Make sure you put tension on your thread. See a lot of loose thread wrapping in fly tying, but if you can practice keeping tension on there, your bugs will be nice and tighter and they'll last longer. Um, but honestly, if, if you have to, write that down um, because it just, it works. You can use it on 
just about any different any size of bug simply because your bead is always going to be relative to your hook size right so if you're tying on a super small one um you're going to go down and back not very far distances sometimes it's only like three wraps down is a bead so no matter what if you use that right bead sizing then uh you'll end up <clears throat> with uh the right uh, taper so now there's i tie my stuff a little bit different so i'm going to kind of go by the book here so because we've wrapped our thread away from us you're usually going to want to wrap your wire the opposite direction right so that's going to tuck right up underneath and then you'll notice you've got nothing at the very back there when you do this so your first segment is going to be up the fly a little bit and then this part is just practice this is just keeping things nice and even <clears throat> i tend to open my wraps up a little bit as i get up the hook if you look at a natural chronomid the bottom segments are always a little bit bigger than the top so that's just going to be a practice thing for you and then bring this wire right tight to the bead and over to you and then you'll be able to capture that with a few wraps enough to snug it down and be able to break it off <clears throat> so once it's snug there actually that's not quite snug enough yet just like so now I can fold the wire over, bring it back, and then with just a couple turns, it'll break right off. <clears throat> so now, I mean, everything's pretty much done. We're gonna throw a couple wraps onto this collar and just finish covering up the, the thread there. And then we can throw a whip finish in and that's it. Just like so, and I got the wrong scissors. Um, so, there it is. I mean, that is gonna be blurry as all hell, but you get the idea, right? Taper's what you're going for, thin is what you're going for, and that uh, should help. Uh, I'm just going to probably fish these things, so I'm gonna give them a coat here and if you can if, I mean if you prefer the look of resin then by all means use the resin but I see a lot of flies that add a lot of bulk using resin um, so again totally up to you guys but the glue just kind of soaks in and uh, doesn't add any bulk whatsoever um, and keeps it nice and thin um i don't i only coat it the one time so what you see right there is what you get and uh give it a little bit to soak in and done glue is that stuff right there that or the loctite uh, which is a little on the pricey side but if you have loctite then uh, that's what you can use um uh, so yeah, do you want me, should I tie two of each or I can go through the second one a little bit quicker? Should we just stick to one? What do you think? I hate tying just one of one fly, so bear with me. I'll do this one quicker. If you have any questions, I can answer those during this uh, second fly because I don't have to explain as much. So if you have questions, then fill your boots and fire away. So one bead. Yes, one of each, two, yeah, I'm tying two. I kind of made the executive decision. I apologize. <clears throat> and again, just, you know, this is gonna allow following that step is 
I know it probably sounds super uh, goofy or, or simple, and it is, but it's something that uh, you will just all of a sudden go ding, holy shit, and start tying pretty consistent uh, bugs. And then unless you're production tying, speed is not, shouldn't be a big deal for you. You know, don't worry about how quick you're tying. If you tie good bugs, they'll last longer. You'll have to tie less. And, and uh, so take your time and some stragglies there. Uh, these are tungsten beads, but you can, I mean, you can use brass. The only thing I say about tungsten or brass is keep them in separate boxes because you want to know which one you're fishing and when. When I want, when I need tungsten fishing 40 feet down, I want to know I have it. So, um, um, I tie all kinds of different, um, ASB thread colors. So I don't know if I have a favorite black and or red would probably be my two top ones. <clears throat> so I did the three bead, I did the two bead. Now I just do the one bead. That's it, super simple. Should you always tie the wire in at the bead, not at the butt? Yes, 100%. Um, it, uh, if you tie it in at the butt, you've just created a lump back there that you don't need. So you'll see how I disperse materials amongst the hook point once we get moved to some other materials. But um, you want to use this taper with any, any bug uh, that you want. Unless you're tying something a little bit outside the box. Like I say, I tie some, some bugs that I don't do a taper on. They're super skinny, and then I put an oversized bead on them. But and if you're just tying a, you know, a run-of-the-mill chronomid, um, then, yeah, I would say this is the way you want to do it. And I'll show you how to add more materials here on the next one. And uh, you shouldn't have too much troubles going forward. Did I get the right amount of them on there? Yeah, I did. <clears throat> And then whether you counter wrap your rib or not is totally up to you. Honestly, on a lot of my personal stuff, I don't bother. The glue holds the holds the uh, everything in place. So, <clears throat> do you do deep lining? I certainly do. Um, love fishing the deep water without uh, on the naked line. So Sunday we were fishing between 40 and 50 feet, um, floating line, yes, 50 feet a liter, and uh, smacking them that way. It was super technical, but super fun. The fish weren't huge, uh, but just getting a fish like that is, is super neat. <clears throat> I hope nobody's having trouble staying connected. It hasn't been glitching out on my end, and usually it does me first, so. <clears throat> All right, so that covers the thread body section. Kind of your basic, and you can do, I mean, any different uh, any different thread colors, and combos are endless. Um, so what is a fly reel make? Uh, Temple Fork Outfitters SD3. Um, I have a couple of Hardies, uh, an Ultralight CLS, and uh, bang for the buck, the the TFO SD3 keeps up with it like no problem. So I would 100% uh, recommend that. Um, like you know, the new Legacy has been performing well. So currently we're using three different rods from, from TFO, BF, BVK, the Axiom 2, and um, the Legacy. So 
impressed with all of them so far. I think my personal favorite right now is probably the Axiom, but or the BBK, I mean. Um, that one I've I've also had it the longest, and it's just one of my uh, one of my favorites. So, yeah, twenty five feet's not so not so much. <clears throat> uh, okay, so let me beat up a couple more hooks here, and now we will tie something. So I can do an ASB one if you want. I was going to do a GMC, but I've got some ASB right here, so I'll do the. Uh, ASB thing just because it's such a popular material to use <clears throat> and it is one of those materials where depending on the type of ASB that you have obviously you can have some more translucent than others but um, <clears throat> one coat on the chronomids uh, you can use an indicator that deep but uh, getting the drift going uh, with the naked line seems to be uh, Seems to be a little bit, that day anyways, was a little bit easier. So, <clears throat> um, okay, so we'll tie up. So I've got materials here. This is just a, an ASB copper brown, kind of a brown ASB thing that we'll tie up here. So um, BBK and NV reels from, excellent. Yeah, both of them are pretty good. Rob, Rob uses a BBK reel and he's been, uh, pretty happy with it. Uh, what do you use to cut your ASB? I do not cut my ASB. <laughs> we sell it on the website pre-cut. Um, so you can get it at flybys.ca in 0 0.5, 0 0.75, one millimeter. Uh, we've been doing that for a while now. So um. <clears throat> so anyhow, with all my chronomids, um, except when I tie a collar of dubbing or peacock curl, um, I put the large hole forward on the shank and that just allows for easier uh, dealing with the gills here. And uni stretch is still my go-to material for gills. Uh, obviously there's all kinds of stuff. I've actually been playing with this uh, glow yarn it's called. Um, so <clears throat> there is a, plenty of stuff, Antron, I mean, there's there's tons, but, um, so I just grab, so you've seen when I tied that in, right up behind the hook eye, a couple wraps, back two or three, forward two or three, that's it. So not a ton, but um, how do you cast? You just do. It uh, isn't fun. It's not pretty. You have to tell your, whoever you're fishing with to duck. And you get it out there and uh, you don't have to get it out super far. The wind will actually start to carry your fly line down beneath you and then away you go. <clears throat> so when I wrap that in, couple wraps down below, pull it back, put two or three wraps in front and then throw the, another couple wraps in behind, snip it off and then whip finish it. So if you don't put those wraps in front, um, it makes it really, really difficult to tie the flies on, especially in the smaller sizes. Um, but it uh, props it up and, I mean, leaving it forward, some people, oh, it'll cover your knot, it'll do this, it'll do that, but honestly, it just gets in the way and it takes two seconds to do that step. But um, no, it's not fun. I mean, if you do it enough, it's like anything, you'll, you'll figure it out. Um, having a little bit of weight uh, in either tungsten or a split shot or something to get you down usually will help uh, to get your leader out there and uh, it's certainly doable but again not uh, not really fun but there you go yeah it happens so all right so the taper we've already gone over I am not going to change how I do that at all and <clears throat> The wire, the whole process is pretty much the same down to when we tie in our ASB. So, <clears throat> for those of you, oh yeah, I didn't even mention, we're doing, I did mention in the story, uh, we are going to do a giveaway. Um, Susan's kind enough to chip in again and uh, 
she is putting up some dubbing, shadow dubbing, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, if you're still here, Susan. Um, and a pair of scissors as well, which is kind of cool. So if you're still around at the end of this, then uh, <clears throat> you can uh, maybe win. You guys, most of you know how I do that. I just scroll through the comments and and uh, put my finger down on a winner. So, yeah, stick around for that. Very, very nice of Susan to check that in for us. Uh, unfortunately, I need these flies for tomorrow, so I'm going to be greedy and hang on to them. Um, but uh, maybe I'll think of something here. Um, yeah, I'll figure something out here. But let's finish tying. So now, <clears throat> we're gonna grab some ASB, and size is whatever you're comfortable tying with. Um, I think this is a 0.75 right here, and it just means less wraps, really. So to tie this in, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I've cut that at an angle, okay? And then I wanna lay that so the, it's angled back this way right now. So if it's this was square, you can see it's on this angle. So when I lay that against the hook shank, I don't have to actually grab the whole thick part of the ASB. I grab a pretty thin bit there, and that allows to not leave a big bump in my tie-in. And now I'm just going to do the same thing. So I barely grabbed any of that, just enough to hold it down there and uh, <clears throat> then I'm gonna finish my taper. Get it looking pretty. So there you go. I could literally tie 15 bugs doing it that way, every one of them would look exactly the same. So now I pull away from me and I just tuck that down there and then with some decent tension, start wrapping this right side by side. I do not want to overlap my ASB. If you overlap ASB, it'll just add bulk that we don't really want. So keep it tight snug wrap side by side and then when you get up to the top just capture it like anything else a couple wraps on top pull it back a couple in behind and then um hang on a sec try and catch up here can i talk about asb what would you like to know about asb um yeah the smaller the hook the smaller the asb you'll probably use um, thread color is rusty brown. So this is ASB is where I really like these. These are the scissors from Vineyard with the super fine tips. So I just nicked that and now I can pull it off and you're not going to be able to see, but there's zero tag there. And with ASB, sometimes that can become a bit of a pain in the butt. Um, so now we'll go ahead. And again, if you want to counter wrap this by all means, um, these are mine, so I'm not going to bother. <clears throat> Sorry if I'm missing questions, doing my best to keep up. Looks good. Tie off my wire, same as I did last time. Fold it, fold it, and then spin it. Um, what is it? Uh, you have a rotary vise, why not use it? That's a long question. Every, some people in here could probably answer that for you, but uh, I'm just that guy that has a rotary vise and doesn't use it. I tie quicker not using it because I used a non-rotary for so long. Um, so it's just, yeah, it's just a thing I do. Um, if that annoys you, then I apologize. <clears throat> but 
ASB is anti-static bag. It is a uh, kind of a plastic bag material used to ship like computer components and stuff. Um, and it's semi-translucent and it's as close as you can get for power bait uh, for trout. So that's, that's uh, anti-static bag. It just does a really, really good job imitating that kind of gassed up look that uh that these bugs get so it's been around for a very long time and it's been popular for a very long time so highly recommend using it if you don't <clears throat> uh 22s are about as small as i go <clears throat> you can short tie them as well to rep like a 24 but um yeah it just curls if you don't if you don't crank on it, then it won't curl, uh, but you need to crank on it. So um, a trick is once you learn how much you have to use for each chronomid. So like, for instance, these size strips, you can get two bugs out of them. So before you wrap, just cut it in half and then you'll have one chronomid and two chronomids. And if they curl up, it don't matter because there's only going to be a little bit left. But there's a trick if you're low on ASB and you want to preserve, use that. That'll uh, that'll help you. <clears throat> uh, it depends on the ASB. So if you have uh, if you have um, super translucent stuff, then it will. If you have super dark stuff, then it won't. Yes, I've done th uh, all kinds of th uh, felt marker stuff, sharpie stuff with ASB. Um, Stretch flex and yeah, so some of that stuff uh, is harder to get to than others, and it's uh, trying to focus on on how to tie them, not so much what we're tying them with. But um, yeah, so I'll just do this one real quick. As you can't have just one. The day you tie one crony and bring it fishing is the day that. It crushes for like an hour and then you snap it off and don't have any more. So don't learn that lesson the hard way. <clears throat> uh, you can use stretch flex, but you're not going to replace ASB with anything out there. That I promise you. <clears throat> So one bead, two bead. Yeah, I mean, we use all kinds of different, you can use different materials, you can use, yeah, there's, I mean, that is like never ending, um, but you cannot, uh, replace static bag we've tried because it is a little bit bulky especially for the smaller bugs um, but it's just one of those things that you kind of deal with right <clears throat> now where did that there it is uh i am going fishing tomorrow you bet i am <laughs> yeah it will uh it will help i should have patented that uh one bead two bead thing because um i've done that in a few of the classes that we teach and people just go oh my goodness like that makes things very easy and honestly it does so <clears throat> Okay, so uh, fishing in a lake. So I did the same thing. I snipped it, my taper, tucked it in. You're basically grabbing the, um, the end that you cut, and then you'll see that allows me to have a nice thin butt and carry it up the remainder of the hook.
Now, I'm not really going to, um, I don't always fish brownies. Uh, I fish them quite often. There's <clears throat> uh, a rib instead of, yeah, so there is that. Um, I was just about to mention that, the use of like multiple ribs and um, like Iron Man style, if you guys are familiar with that. The Iron Man style fly is something that uses a tinsel or something like an ASB and then open spiral wraps it up the shank. Um, but if I'm being honest, they become way, way less durable when you tie them that way. Um, and in my opinion, a little bit less. Some people say they're more realistic, but what ends up happening is you have a, a almost even typically uh, of body segment to rib. So the rib doesn't become thin. It's as thick as the segment. So, I mean, it shows segmentation, but not like a wire does. And then the biggest thing about the wire over top of the ASB is it'll, it's way more durable. If you wrap like a two rib crony and you do ASB and then follow it with wire up, the minute a fish cuts that ASB, she gone, right? Toast. Whereas with this, especially if you counter wrap, uh, if your ASB gets cut, typically you can just take your nippers and nip off that little bit and keep on fishing it. So kind of up to you guys, but um, that style is, is more of a fisherman catcher than it is a fish catcher in my opinion. Um, but to each their own and uh, that's it. Uh, the rib thing I was talking about counter wrapping versus not counter wrapping. So by the book would be counter rubbing. So it just means whatever way you tie your ASB, you wrap your rib the opposite. That's that's all I meant with that. Uh, give her their bills. What has he got about the gills? So if anybody's in here and they're gonna be tying these uh, crawnies, then uh, tag me in the, uh, if you post it, tag us in it. And uh, I'm kinda, if anybody out there wants to do like a before and an after thing, uh, that would be pretty sick um, Just to see if there's any improvement because I think there would be How many wraps of thread do you put around your hook to start in uh, like three or four? Um, so you go right behind the hook eye one two three like immediately behind the hook eye then go one two three back one two three forward so you got like nine wraps approximately um, That's really all you need to do to get the gills tied in and then it makes slipping the bead over really easy on the smaller bugs a little trick is if you take your uni stretch and somewhere here i think i can make this work you can just do this and pull it and now this becomes super super thin and you'll be able to tie it in on the small bugs really easy because you don't need a big gill now feel free on anything smaller than a 16 feel free to ditch the gills. I have been fishing no gilled flies uh, just about all spring so far, and they've been crushing. So feel free to just ditch the gills on the smaller bugs, but. <clears throat> all right, so. Give it a whip finish. For your collars, um, your thorax, whatever you want to call it, those you kind of want to have about no bigger than the bead size. So if your collar is like half or three quarter the size of the bead, that's probably perfect. Um, but 18, no gill, ditch the gill. Totally up to you, but I have no 18s, no fresh tied 18s uh, for this season in my box that have a gill on them. So. It's uh, it's super easy, but we'll zoom in on that. And I know it sucks, it's hard to see, but the taper is what we're shooting for. And we have 
hella thin back here and not even the size of the bead up here. If you're tying coronamids and your thread is like halfway up the bead and the thorax is the same size, then again, totally just my opinion, your bug is too thick. Um, and yes, there are days when the same exact fly tied thick or thin, the thin one will catch and the thick one won't. That uh, has happened more than once. <clears throat> All right, so if I ditch the gills, I think that's what you meant. I don't change the bead color. No, I just don't. You don't have to, you can do a black bead or a brown bead or um, whatever and uh, not put gills on. I don't paint them with anything. I don't, nothing, just simple. Uh, if Susan's in here, Susan, I, I, the package is over there. Otherwise I would tell you the, the model of it. Uh, but hopefully Susan's still around and she can help you find that. <clears throat> Make sure you put the washer on the right way. That's the only thing I'll tell you about that, uh, that bob and they're cool to tie with. I just loaded a bunch so I didn't have to switch, but this little thing here has got a washer on the back side of it for your tension. Just make sure you got that set up the right way. After you do that, you will love it. Uh, okay, so now I'm gonna grab, I almost had everything out, we were almost perfect. If you put a white piece of paper behind your bug while doing a close up, it should. Yeah, well, let's see. What do we got? Bah! Oh, better. Oh, look at Susan go. So we'll hold that there. So you can see, and actually now, I kind of want to. I'm going to put that other one up uh, that we tied a little earlier. <clears throat> Throw that one up and give you a decent look at that. Oh, it's not too, too bad. At least you can kind of see it uh, quite a bit better, actually. Get out of the light. But you can see how both those flies, the taper is like exactly the same, right? So not much. You just don't need a ton of it. If you look at those bugs, it's not like they go, they just, it's a slight little taper, so. Uh, yeah, now you can see, they're not actually shit. They actually look kind of good. <clears throat> okay, so, there's that thing. Bead tip is a game changer. I hope it is, folks, honestly, I hope it is. That's, uh, it's just one thing that, it's so hard to get a clean, clean tie, and, and that's people, you know, I feel like they're doing it the right way, but they're just not quite getting those thread wraps tight together, or, they're just skipping from the bottom to the top, from the bottom to the top. If you notice on any of the bugs that I tie, I only ever go down to the bottom of the hook one time. So once I'm at the bottom, I'm tying something in back there and I go back up. This next one will do a little bit different. Um, so I'll show you, but Stonfo Elite Compact Bobbin. There you go. Before and after pictures are gonna be drastic. All right, that's what I wanna see. Okay, where was I? Brown beads. Brown beads, 3.30 seconds. And yes, these are tungsten, but that's just my preference. <clears throat> and then I don't know how you guys store your beads, but if you get these little tackle things or whatever the hell they're called, um, I don't know if I can get that in there or not, then sweet little way to keep all your beads organized <clears throat> um, doo -doo 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 -doo. no you um, your thorax if your thorax is you see a lot of flies where they start to get big at the back and by the time they're at the thorax you can barely see the top of the bead because the thorax is covering the majority of the bead and in my opinion that's that's it's too thick if you go if you cover the whole bead i mean sometimes they'll get close um but if you look at like this thing for instance uh where's my little okay we're gonna go back to this for scott uh come on 
Focus, you little shit. Anyhow, you get the idea. You can see that the bead is bigger than the collar. So that's kind of what you're shooting for. <clears throat> Bills is rocking our flies as he look, perfects his own. And the Zook is crushing. I wish we had more there for you to choose from, but they sell out pretty quick. <clears throat> so I should tie, one day I'll tie like what I believe is a chunky crony and what I believe is a thin crony or a normal crony and then I'll post the side by side one day and you guys will see the, see the difference there for sure. So this one I'm gonna rock some of this uh, glow yarn. Um, it's totally not necessary, but it's just something I kind of want to play with. <clears throat> so, okay, so whoever asked, Bills, I think, was asking. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's it. So to tie in your gills, that's all you're going to do. And how are we doing for time? Okay, we should be able to get through this one, and then we'll call her a night. So this stuff's a little bit thicker than some of the other stuff. So one, two, three, there, one. Oh, okay, just so you know, I probably just hung up a fishing report from Rob. That was him calling, so I'm devoted to you guys here. Actually, I'll just phone him when we're done, but sounded good. <clears throat> so this shit is messy as all get, I'll tell you that right now. There we go. Ah, okay, well I will get, I don't have large paper here. I will get large paper, we'll, we'll work on this. I'm always open to suggestions, people. If you guys know more about this than I do, I am certainly more of a fisherman than I am videographer. So anybody that's got tips, I will listen. 16s, yeah, three, uh, uh, sorry, 330 seconds too big on a 16. You want to use a 564th on a 16. But, oh, he doesn't watch this stuff. That's Rob. He, this is like techie. He's very underrated. He, he knows really techie things, but he just pretends he doesn't. So here we're going to tie a dirty olive. And there's a bunch of different ways to tie these things. This one I use a couple different materials. Um, so we're gonna jam a bunch of shit on this hook. So, so it's it's very similar, the process. I don't deviate too much from how I tie things. Um, a, because it just works. B, because it keeps things thin. So yeah, that's a good tip. Need a white bib, oh boy. Sam, can you talk to Sheila about getting me a white bib, bro? <clears throat> All right, so tying the wire in the same. There's just one step that's different on this one, and it's why I don't tie. The smaller your bug, the less detail you need. So when you get to tying small bugs, don't try to jam so much shit on a small hook. It's just not needed. When I'm fishing small bugs, Honestly, it's flashaboo or thread, like 95% of the time. Sometimes ASB, but. Uh, okay, so first material I'm gonna tie in is gonna be the buzzer wrap. <clears throat> this is olive. And, oh, hi, buddy. What are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? Come on in. I'm gonna say hi. You lay down there, please. So I'm gonna tie this in the same as I did the ASB. So just capture it here, and then I'm gonna come up, and I'm trying to keep this just thin, and then I'm gonna stop. So this is where things get a little bit different. Um, now I'm gonna grab my flashaboo, 
And this is number 6987, the, the brown holographic. It's got some red in it and that kind of thing. Um, so I'm going to show you two different ways to do this because some people won't have this flasher boot. It'll be a hollow tinsel and that's a little bit different. But for this, right now you could tuck that in and wrap it around, send it down, tie it in the same as you did the wire. All you're doing is dispersing things so you don't either have a big bump down here, right? But um, if that's what I want you to do, if it's a thicker tinsel, like a 132nd or something like that. If it isn't, then once you get that um, olive tied in, then you can wrap this around your thread. So you can see I'm actually like lifting my thread up right there, but pull it right down and just start wrapping. And that adds zero bulk to the back end of the fly. It's why I like tying with flash boo so much because it's just thin. And then I'll come back up and then it's basically the same as the ASB. You've just added that little thing in, but because we wrap it around the hook, it doesn't really have to get squished in there. It's just a tiny bit of it and it adds like hardly any any bulk so now i'm just going to finish out my taper here two bead and one bead bazinga so how thin is that sucker at the back right no bumps lumps buzz all all right so We'll go ahead and wrap my flasher glue first. So I try to get these two strands separate. They'll lay a little bit flatter than if they're sitting top on, right on top of each other. Mm -mm. And same thing here, tension with your wraps. Here, if you leave a little gap or something, in between your thread and the um, flasher boot, it don't matter. And I'll show you why, because we're gonna wrap that um, buzzer wrap over top after, it just adds to kind of that model look. <clears throat> uh, it's um, holographic brown flasher boot, uh, 6987 I think. Yep, 6987. So now I'm gonna grab the buzzer wrap and wrap this. This is where I don't want to overlap. I just want side by side wraps so I can get that brown hollow to pop through. And when I zoom in on this, that's when you're gonna realize like, okay, you can put a lot of shit on a hook and still keep it super thin. <clears throat> We're getting thumbs up, so it must be sinking in. It must be, uh, Hopefully it's going to help. That's probably the one of the one of the things that can elevate your game so far in this you know, with cronies is just what I mentioned there is just even, smooth. Okay, go the right way there, you butter. I don't want to sit right for me there. There we go. Oh, I'm getting a little OCD now. <clears throat> okay, let's try that one more time. That's better. <clears throat> and then, so you'll see here, even with all that stuff, I still haven't, the bead is probably still, I don't know, it's quite a bit bigger than the, the thorax. 
Uh, that is copper brown wire. <clears throat> if I'm missing things, I apologize, but... <clears throat> I'm a little hesitant to post a recording of this one. I kind of think I should, but there's a lot of information in it that uh, will change the game of time for a lot of people. And I'm just like, kind of mean that in a legit way. It's uh, <clears throat> it's one of those things that uh, if you showed up, you get the you get the info and and. Uh, but we'll see. So, <clears throat> let me just glue this sucker. And when you put the glue on, this is a fly where you could certainly use resin, but again, not at the expense of bulking it up. So if you've got something super thin, then go ahead. But the glue in itself will make this, uh, this thing pop just a wee bit more. <clears throat> Um, all right, so there it is. We'll come in just a little closer. So doesn't look much different than the other ones really, right? So if we bring in this thing, um, oh man, I left my little hackle pliers. Uh, I'll just go like that and so if we hold them both up, so you can see like, there's a little bit of a difference there, obviously, right? Like the thread, but that's thread body next to like three different materials. So it, uh, yeah. So just, I'll go through that one again, uh, just cause it's got the most steps. And then we'll have to call her a night after that. <clears throat> but we'll do the giveaway uh, here real quick. I'm going to bang out this last fly. Just bear with me. If you have any last questions uh, for me, then... Oh, we still got my big mug right here. Let's get that out of there. Um, yeah, so... Cool. Uh, if you guys think, like I say, if you if you use these tips and and you don't mind posting flies, then uh, tag me in them, tag us in them. Let me know uh, how this works and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> again, I, I want to repost it, but you guys that show up here kind of, that's why I do certain things on here because, um, but I'll give it some thought. And you're welcome to always send a message and we can uh, answer your questions for you that way. Uh, Michaels for crazy glue. Uh, yes, Michaels, you can get the crazy glue. They're always out of stock here. Um, da -da 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 -da. What are the colors flash glue do you use the most when wrapping the whole body? Um, so it's up to you. Like if you just use that brown, uh, with like a gold rib, then that's our hot chocolate. Um, the cranberry body makes, uh, catches a lot of fish. The, yeah, there's a bunch of different, a bunch of different stuff that, um, that you can use colors, but they're kind of endless. <clears throat> Save on foods usually only has the little, uh, dinky, Freaking tube bottle things without the brush. So, although I had to coat like, I probably coated 300 chronomids using one of those things not long ago. Okay, where's my wire? Took a little bit longer than I wanted to, but bear with me. I'm gonna do the giveaway as soon as I'm done this fly and it won't take too long. Yeah, you could have the sexiest fly on the planet. You still got to put it in front of fish, so. <clears throat> I 
I think we've got Rob Smith lobbying for uh, the recording to get put up. <clears throat> I'm glad it helps, bud. <clears throat> so again, if you're going to, on this step here, if you're going to use like, uh, you know, like a 1 32nd uh, tinsel or something like that, then tie your olive in and go all the way up and all the way back down. If you're using the flasher boo, then just one wrap just to pin my olive down. And then wrap your flasher boo around. Pull everything tight, slide her down there, and you're in. Like I say, I'm a fan of flasher boo just uh, for that reason, is that it is nice and thin. You're all welcome. Sorry if I'm missing uh, these questions here. I've been Sam. Are you selling my services? What the? F we gotta talk, you and I, bud. But <clears throat> da 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 da. -da. Glow bright floss. That's what this is. See? Oh, it's glow. Yeah, glow bright. Glow yarn. Glow bright. It. Uh, are you tying double strands? No, it's one strand of flash glue wrapped around the the thread. Um, and then you pick it up and slide it down and just start wrapping your thread and you don't have a bump and you actually, you're wrapping two, uh, two strands when you go up, but you're only tying in uh, one. And then again, try not to overlap these buzzer wraps or whatever it is that you're tying over top. Sometimes I'll do this with ASB as well. Uh, but when you want something to show through, you want as little wraps as possible. Holy, that was an hour. That was a like, poof, gone. <clears throat> that much closer to fishing tomorrow. You. Six to seven ribs. Don't get too hung up on counting. Get more hung up on on uh, keeping it nice and even. If you can only fit five, then do five. If you can fit six, do six. But <clears throat> clean up that thorax a little bit. Bazinga. There it is. Yep. Yep, the gills you can do about the same size as the bead. If they're a little bit smaller, it uh, doesn't matter too much. And then again, don't get hung up on them. If, if you're tying on smaller hooks, just ditch them. The fish do not care, I promise you. There might not, we'll see if there's catches tomorrow. Um, I'm off to a lake that has been known to kick the asses of some very good fishermen. So I'm not holding my breath, but you don't catch big fish without taking an ass kicking every now and then. So we'll see what happens. Um, all right, so let's try zoom in this one. I went through that pretty quick. There it is, nice and thin, taper, super simple.
but not at the same time. Right? Oh, maybe I can do this and it'll do the whole thing. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's the best I got from Blurville, folks. I can't get that to focus any better, but you get the idea. <clears throat> um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh oh, I'm going to get that off of there. There we go. Okay, last couple questions. He does make it look easy. Tie about a gajillion of them. Literally thousands and thousands, and that's what happens. So... All right, let's uh, rock it out into a giveaway, shall we? Um, and let's see who the winner is. So uh, if you win, get yourself in touch with uh, Susan, and she will hook you up. Um, I don't know. I want to kind of give away like a Zoom. I, I gave away a Zoom lesson through through a charity thing earlier and it went really really well the dude quite liked it but um we'll save that for the next one maybe i'll do a poll because not everybody ties so not everybody would like getting a zoom lesson uh but uh we'll look it down the road um see how that goes uh, okay drum roll please and i'm scrolling and we're scrolling who's gonna win it and Bam, we have a Matt Krieger. Is Matt in the house? Matt Krieger, where are you? Homeboy, one it all. Dearborn Difference, hashtag Dearborn Difference, people. I won, there he is. Kick ass, Matt, congrats, buddy. Thank you to you all for uh, joining me tonight. That was a kick-ass uh, little session. I think there'd be a lot of you that uh, are pumping out some pretty sexy bugs after that. Uh, tag us in your stuff. Um, send pictures if you need uh, any critiquing or anything like that. Keep it simple. Keep it slim. Uh, that's all I got. Moose and I are out. He is napping. And uh, that's all I got. So... Thank you very much to Susan at Chinook Wind Outfitters. Uh, go give her a follow if you don't already. And uh, check out the website. She uh, kicks ass and she's very knowledgeable and has a lot of stuff. And uh, yeah, great little place. So go uh, check all that out. And wish me luck tomorrow. Uh, if anybody else is fishing this week, then good on you. And... We will see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody.